Hello everybody, welcome to today's episode of Easy SAP Op Op. Today we're going to show you how to schedule a background job in SAP. So I've written just a simple little program here uh, that just for 10 times and it waits 10 seconds and every 10 seconds it's going to write out a message at index and the index of the do loop on the outside. That's all it's going to do is write this message at index 1, at index 2, at index 3, and it's going to take some time to execute. So what I'm going to do to schedule this background job, the easiest way is to use the job wizard. We go to SM36. We can do this manually too. We can go through each start condition step, but 90% of the time I would venture to say you're going to be using the job wizard just because you're wanting to schedule one simple report, you're not going to do you know, this step, that step, after this event. So let's click Job Wizard in SM36. That's going to present us with an easy to use wizard that's going to take us through the steps of scheduling the job. So it tells you, what, you know, we're going to use this Job Wizard, say Continue. We give it a name. I like to give it a Z name, though it's not necessary, um, just for simple reason. In the future, SAP could possibly release a standard system job that uh, conflicts with one that we've already scheduled. So I like to give it a Z name. And I usually, just for my purposes, like to name it the same thing as the ABOP program. So Z underscore background underscore job. Name it the same thing as the ABOP program that I'm having it run. That way I can just quickly say, oh, okay, this is what this is. Uh, job class. You can specify whether it's high priority, middle priority, or low priority. So for something that we absolutely don't have to have run as soon as you know the scheduled time starts, we say low priority. And we can give it a target server, which is our current server that we're on right here. Or we can leave it blank, and it's just going to use the current server. So I'll leave it blank and say continue. Now, the next step, we're going to define what we want the job to be external command as a step, external program as a step, but we want an ABOP program as our first step in the job. We want Z underscore background underscore job. So I'm going to say next, I'm going to enter my ABOP program and you can optionally choose a variant. If this program had a selection screen, we could say execute this background job with this particular variant. This program doesn't have a selection screen, so we're not going to use a variant. We can define any print parameters. For example, if the program is supposed to print, then we define those parameters here as to what the output device is and the rest of those. Uh, spool list recipients. So any emails that it's created from any spools that are generated from our ABOP program, we can define that here. Email notification, same type of deal. We can say, okay, when this job finishes or runs or succeeds or fails, send you know administrator, XYZ an email. So I'm going to just do background job. I'm not going to define any of these other parameters. I'm going to say continue. We could do an additional step. So if we had a program that we wanted to run after this one, we could do that. I'm not going to do that. So I'm just going to say continue again. Now we select the start date. And this can be immediately a specific date or time after another job finishes, after a system event, after an operation mode switch. We can say start on the next work day or do not release job, which means it's going to be out there created, but it's not going to be released and some other program or event will have to trigger that job. So I'm going to say, let's do it at a date and time. So I'm going to say today on, let's see what time is it? It is 740 local time. So let's say we'll do it today on seven and this is in 24 hour mode 742 just to give us well I'll say 743 just give us some time we could say we want it to not run on Sundays or holidays this is based off the SAP factory calendar I'll give it just a few more minutes um, 217 1945 uh, and this is based off the factory calendar so if you've got your factory calendar designating a day as a holiday it won't run on that day let's make this job periodic let's say it runs every you know, every hour, every day, every week, every month, we could do none of the above and do you know every five minutes, 10 minutes, something like that. Let's just say every hour and we'll say complete. So now we can see Z background job with status released. So now let's get rid of 
this. I'll show you guys a full screen. We can go to SM37 to monitor our jobs. I'll say Z asterisk. Scheduled, released, ready, active, finished, canceled. We'll go ahead and we'll look at this job. So we can see this job has been released. We can double click on the job. We can see it's scheduled to start at this time and run hourly. One step has been defined. So we can look at steps. We can see our step is an ABAP program now named Z underscore background job, my username. We can see job details, schedule job when it was last released, changed, started, all that different thing, you know, things we can see about it. We can see if there's a predecessor job or a successor job. We can look at the email notifications, set it up for this even after we've defined the job. We can look at the start condition. And then you see the start condition here is a start time. So now we pretty much just wait for this job to run. And what we do is we can come in here to job log after it's get done running to see any of the messages that it may have output. So any of the ABOP message commands. So you say message XYZ type I type E type W all those different commands are going to get output here as well as any other messages that are issued by standard function modules that our ABOP program may call. We can actually, if the job does write some data, or if it does create an ALV, or any other sort of output, we can look at this job once it's finished, and go to spool. And that spool will show us whatever the output was from that job, be that the ALV table, tree, um, hierarchical sequential list, so we can stop the job right here. We can delete it from database before it's run. It won't, you know, run anymore. We can stop an active job. This is a different button. If a job's active, this requests it to stop at the, I suppose, next logical unit of work. Some of our other options here, we can just look at and see we can print, compare jobs, and just some, you know, general, general options here. So what we're going to do is we're going to wait for this job to start. It's scheduled to start within the next minute here. And once it starts, we'll see the status that says released change to running. And what that's going to do is going to stay in running until it either becomes canceled or finished. And when it's canceled or finished, this indicates that the job completed successfully or not successfully. Um, some reasons it might go to canceled status is going to be if a short dump gets created. If um, I believe if the last message issued during the job is of type E, then it's going to go to canceled status. It's going to go to finish status if neither of those conditions occur. The ABOP program finishes running and everything is good to go. So this job should be starting any second now. I'm just going to keep refreshing. few seconds past the hour here I've got a little delay that's probably due to my trial system being on an application server with limited resources so there's other system jobs that can happen here you'll see this you know delay whenever a job has to be postponed since we've issued this job with low priority it's going to give precedence to other jobs that may want to run before it so that's why we see a few seconds here. If we schedule this job and gave it a priority of high, or even a priority of medium, whatever the medium setting was, I think it was called medium priority, then this job will take precedence over any other jobs running. Now we can see our background job, we have active. It's got a duration of four seconds so far. Our loop in our ABOP program says run for 10 seconds, so we should see after around 10 seconds, this should finish. Or I think it said 10 seconds and then wait 10 seconds on each iteration of the loop. So this should actually run for 100 seconds. But we see two, two things here. We see our job that's running in an active status. And since this is a periodic job, we're going to see another one that's released. This is not yet running, but it's scheduled to start for the time that we said to do in the delay. So every hour. So I set a first job, run it at 1945. Next job, it's going to run it. 20.45. So if I back out, I look, I see our job is about halfway done. 
I can double click on the job, go to the job log, and I can see what's happening. At index 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, it's delaying again for 10 seconds and then writing out at index whatever the index is. So if I keep refreshing, you see it's at index 7. It's going to eventually get to index 10. And then at index 10, this is when the job has finished. It's going to output at index 10. And then we'll see a message in the job log here that says that our job has finished. So let me back out one more time and look at our two jobs, the release job and the running job, which is in status active. So it's been running for 100 seconds and it's finished as expected by the conditions laid out in our ABOP code. So this finish status indicates that it's done. We can again click on it, go to job log. We see our job was started. We see step one was started. Our step one was an ABOP program step, which called this ABOP program, Z underscore background underscore job variant. And then we see a space here. So there was no variant and we can see the user that released the job and then job finished after any messages that we output. So we can see here with our messages are going to show the message class. It's going to show 00 if we didn't use a specific message class as we would define in transaction SE91. It's going to show just a generic message number for you know that reason we didn't use a specific message class and then it's going to show the message type. Information, S is success, E is error, and that's about all you need to know for uh, starting a simple ABOP report as a background job. Again, that those two transactions, SM36 is going to be how you define your job. You can do job wizard. You can actually click on on jobs to see a list of all your own jobs. I have some other, you know, UI5 app index calculate job out here, but these are all my own jobs by my username. And then SM37 is going to show us a list of jobs that have executed, that have finished, canceled, and we can specify the times, the status, all that in here. We can actually search just by the ABOP program name if we know there's a job out there that uses a specific ABOP program, but we don't know the job name. So this is really useful for people that don't follow my naming convention, where the job name is the same as the ABOP program. You can actually put your ABOP program in here and get a list of jobs just running that step. So that just about wraps it up, guys. If you have any questions about background jobs, how to schedule them, how uh, their execution works, or just any other ABOP questions in general, please feel free to leave a comment. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.